Let me start by saying good morning, Mr. Patrick. My name is Sepa Muzipe. I'm from South Africa in Rustenburg. Um, I'm a small time artist. I love drawing and I play basketball too. Um, what and who inspired you to fall in love with painting? Well, I've always, uh, I've always been, ever seen, um, I, was, I was born in Africa. I was born in uh, DRC, Congo. Yeah. And, and uh, ever since I was a child, I know that, you know, I used to draw, you know, in my, all my school books, was doodling. So I've always, uh, I've always liked art, but it's just later on in my life that I really, I really started exploring it more seriously. I started painting really in 2008 when I was uh, playing professional basketball in Greece. How did you actually get the time to balance between the desire for drawing and actually focusing on your basketball career? Yeah. It was actually uh, just really my love for it and my passion for it. What I would do is uh, I, would, I would start painting around 10 o'clock at night and I would paint, uh, this is especially at the beginning, I would paint from about 10 o'clock at night to five in the morning. And, uh, and then I will sleep for a few hours, go to practice. And at lunchtime, I had a friend who was a gallery owner, but also a painter, my mentor. Then I'll bring him my work and show it to him. So my, uh, I guess my love for it and my passion for it compelled me to just work really hard at it, especially at the beginning. Now, I no longer do that, but at the beginning, that's what I was doing yeah. because um, I felt like that's what I needed to do to get a strong base, strong uh, foundation to, to, to become a better artist. How long does it actually take you to finish one beautiful piece of art? 40 years. 40 years. 40 like, years. No, like just to finish one piece. Yes, 40 years. 40 by years. that I mean, by, by, by that I mean, you know, these pieces are the result of my life experience, right? So, oh, so yeah. there are pieces that have taken me months to finish. finish. Like right now, I think I have about four or five pieces in my studio that are waiting just sitting there and I don't know which direction to take them. So I just leave them alone. But there are pieces that I've started and finished in 30 minutes or an hour or two hours, you know? So, yeah. so it really depends. I don't, I don't, I don't really, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I have the freedom not to, not to, uh, put pressure on me that I got to finish this or I kind of just go and as the, uh, I work on multiple pieces at the same time, multiple pieces at the same time. So I may not have inspiration or I don't have a direction that I like for this particular piece, but I do for that one. So I work on that one. And sometimes I get stuck. And I get stuck for days or weeks or months and I'll just leave it alone and work on something else. So what is uh, like one advice that would, would you actually give to a kid who's actually in love with drawing or painting and also plays sports in general, like not exactly basketball only, but play sports and also love art? Uh, that's a very good question. You know, my, my, my thing, my, my advice would be, you know, whatever you find to do, do it with all your might. Do it as hard as you can. Do it with all your heart. If it's time to paint, paint with all your heart. If it's time to play, play with all your heart. Do everything, oh. whatever you do, do it with love, do it with passion. You know, do it hard. If it's time to study, study hard and let only that matter. And then the second one would be, uh, find a way to feel your passion. Meaning, you know, on the continent, there are so many incredible artists, read about them. 
you yeah. know, read about them. Uh, if you if if you know some of them, go ask them questions. Go watch them work. I still do it today. I'll just go and watch other people work and ask questions because it's just too much I don't know. Be humble enough to pursue to pursue knowledge, to pursue wisdom from those who know. And then when wow. you do, apply it. How yeah, like how does the stress actually get get to you and how do you handle it when you're under pressure? Like you actually one of the assistant coach in one of the biggest teams in the league, like Toronto Raptors. Mm-hmm. So how does the frustration, the workout and everything that like, gets to you and how do you deal with that? Well, you know, I think the work that you do before is very is very important. Uh, yeah. It helps you, you know, when you're prepared, you handle stress better. You know, and then you got to put things in the right perspective. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people depend on, on how well we play, how well we, we prepare our players. Our players depend on us to give them the right information and equip them to go and do their jobs properly. But then when it's all said and done, there's no pressure. Pre- you know what pressure is? Pressure is a doctor who was to operate on a on a father of five. And that if he doesn't do his job properly, that man dies and five kids are the father. Pressure is a pilot who's got to take 300 passengers from one destination to another. And on that plane, there's fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, etc. And if he doesn't do his job well, 300 people won't go home. That's pressure. pressure. Yeah. Basketball game, that's not pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Something else. Yeah. You know, so you when you put things in the right perspective, it helps yeah. you take yeah. a step back. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's not stressful at times. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying when you put things in the right perspective, Nobody's dying when when we lose a game. Uh, yeah, and then you have to you think in a different manner. Yeah. Um, on behalf of I am we are say thank you so much for taking your time to actually do this thank interview you. with me. This was fun. Yeah, it is amazing talking to you. Thank you. <laughs>